The power of choice, or is it? Have you ever stopped to ponder the reason behind clicking this video? Was it a deliberate choice or just a mere flicker of your subconscious? Are we truly responsible for actions we take? The Texas Tower Sniper, Charles Whitman. On August 1st, 1966, this ruthless killer brutally murdered his own mother and wife with knives. He then took his violent spree to University of Texas, armed with multiple firearms. Amidst the chaotic and terror-stricken scene, Whitman opened fire on innocent students and staff, leaving three people dead in the university's main building. But the terror wasn't over yet. Climbing to the 28th floor of the clock tower, Whitman continued his relentless barrage of bullets, raining down terror on the people below for heart-stopping 96 minutes. In the end, his killing spree left 11 people dead and 31 others wounded, before he was finally brought down by police officers. In total, 16 lives were taken by this monster, with the 16th victim succumbing to injuries sustained in the attack years later. After the tragedy, an autopsy was performed on Whitman's body, revealing a shocking possible explanation for his deadly behavior. The autopsy revealed that he had a brain tumor pressing on his amygdala, a crucial region in the brain that controls emotion and behavior. Could this have played a role in his descent into madness and destruction? The world may never know for sure. But still, it poses an interesting question whether we have free will or not. The ultimate question of free will has puzzled philosophers and great minds for centuries. Are our choices truly our own, or is everything predetermined by outside forces? This age-old debate takes a new relevance as neuroscientists weigh in, exploring the depths of the human mind and the nature of our choices. On one side, there's determinism, the belief that all events are predetermined and that there's no such thing as free will. On the other, there's indeterminism, which argues that the outcome of any event is uncertain and purely probabilistic. There is also something called compatibilism, which is the belief that free will and determinism can coexist. This means that while external factors may influence our actions and decisions, we still have the ability to make choices and act freely within the limits of those influences. In other words, we have the power to shape our own destiny within the confines of fate. Most famous experiment that denies existence of free will is the one done in 1983 by Benjamin Libet, American neuroscientist who was a pioneer in the field of human consciousness. With subjects willing to take part, he asked them to make a simple flick of their wrist. But here's the twist. As they did, he measured the activity in their brain. What he discovered was shocking. The brain activity leading up to the conscious decision to flick the wrist began approximately half a second before the subject even realized they had made the choice. This groundbreaking study challenged the traditional understanding of free will and sparked a heated debate about the nature of our decision-making processes. Some view Libet's result as evidence that our choices are first made unconsciously, only later being perceived as conscious decisions while others criticized the experiment's methodology. Regardless, it remains a fascinating and thought-provoking exploration of the human mind and its relationship to free will. Another famous researcher in this field of study is Daniel Wagner, who was a psychologist who conducted several experiments exploring the relationship between conscious will and behavior. One of his most famous experiments, known as the White Bear Study, involved participants who were asked to try not to think about the white bear. The results showed that when participants tried to suppress their thoughts of a white bear, they actually thought about it more. This experiment suggested that conscious will can have an unexpected and opposite effect on behavior. Another of Wegner's experiments, the Apparent Mental Causation Study, investigated the relationship between cautious attention and actual behavior. In this study, participants were asked to think about moving a cursor on a computer screen with their thoughts alone. The cursor was actually moved randomly by the experimenter, but participants believed that their thoughts were causing the movement. This experiment showed that people often attribute their actions to their conscious intentions, even when those intentions do not actually cause the behavior. These and other experiments conducted by Wegener added to the growing body of research on free will and consciousness and helped to shed light on the complex relationship between our thoughts, intentions and actions. So, should you become a determinist now? 
at your own risk. Studies have linked a belief in determinism to negative outcomes like depression and anxiety, as the idea of having no control over one's life can lead to feelings of hopelessness and meaninglessness. A study by psychologists Kathleen Voss and Jonathan Schooler in 2008 explored how people's behavior changes when they are primed to believe in determinism. The experiment involved having the participants read about a study that suggested behavior is controlled by factors outside of one's control or a neutral study. Next, the participants were asked to complete math problems on a computer, but were informed that before studying that the computer might accidentally display the answers. If that happened, they were told to quickly click away without looking. The results showed that those who had read the deterministic study were more likely to cheat on the test. This suggests that accepting determinism as true can lead to unethical behavior, with the author stating, perhaps denying free will will simply provide the ultimate excuse to behave as one likes. The question of whether humans have free will or not is a complex and intriguing one, and various brain disorders can provide insights into this. For instance, the auditory hallucinations experienced by individuals with schizophrenia suggest that there may be a disconnect between their will and their behavior. Moreover, there have been instances where the left brain of people with disconnected hemispheres has been seen to invent explanations for movements initiated by the right hemisphere, leading to the assumption that these actions were consciously willed. This highlights the impact of unconscious brain processes on decision making. One of the most striking examples of the potential disconnect between thought and action is alien hand syndrome. Individuals with this condition are known to conduct complex motor movements against their will, reaching for objects and manipulating them without intending to do so. This can even lead to the affected person having to use their controllable hand to restrain the other. However, it's important to note that under normal circumstances, intent and action are deeply intertwined. The occurrence of alien hand syndrome can be seen as functional disentanglement between the two. In conclusion, these examples highlight the complex interplay between conscious and unconscious processes in decision-making and action. They challenge the traditional notion of free will and suggest that our actions may be determined by unconscious brain processes to a greater extent than we actually thought. So, is there any hope for free will? Are we really controlled by our biology and our environments? The idea that all causation in the universe is bottom-up, meaning that the physical particles that make up all objects and organisms drive all movements, would suggest that our choices and actions are not truly in our control. However, the advent of quantum mechanics over a century ago reunited the idea of indeterminism, suggesting that reality is inherently probabilistic and not predetermined as previously thought. But mere quantum indeterminism does not necessarily equate to free will, as it only accounts for randomness rather than control over it. The concept of free will presents a daunting question to the very foundation of our legal system. If the notion of free will were to be proven false, the consequences would be far-reaching and profound. Criminal defendants would be no longer held accountable for their actions, as they would be unable to make a deliberate choice. The same would apply to a child who performs poorly on an exam, as their test score would be beyond their control. This age-old question continues to elude us, with psychology only offering a limited insight into our understanding and belief in it. Despite the role that gene-environment interactions play in shaping our behavior, there remains a significant portion of variability that remains to be explored. Despite the ongoing debate, what is crucial is our perception and treatment of each other as individuals who possess a sense of self-determination. This means acknowledging the significance and value of one's thoughts and emotions and treating each person with respect and dignity. By doing so, we are upholding the fundamental principle of human autonomy and self-determination, regardless of the ultimate truth of free will.